Macron wants to be an imam, issuing a French fatwa on Islam. Muslims from Gaza to Bangladesh are angry and boycotting anything French. Meanwhile, some magazine named after a bloke called Charlie pretends to be the bastion of free speech by drawing the same cartoons to get some attention. The story today is not only about France's president, a diplomatic spat, a boycott movement or a satirical magazine. It's about Europe's problem with Islam, which has not only translated into disrespect, tension and enmity with the Muslim world, but also into police brutality, discrimination, scapegoating and abuse of Europe's very own Muslim population. Macron caused the stir when he declared that, quote, Islam is in crisis all over the world today. In addition to reassuring nearly 6 million French Muslims, 9% of the country's total population, and the largest Muslim community in Europe, that he would, quote, liberate Islam from foreign influences. After the beheading of a French school teacher, Samuel Paty, by 18-year-old Chechen national, Abdullah Anzorov, after Paty showed caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad to his class. Macron went on to defend provocative caricatures and France's laïcité, which effectively bans religious expression in certain areas of public life. This was not the first time Macron and his ministers had declared war against what they call Islamist separatism and Islamist radicalism, sweepingly connecting Islam with violence and terrorism to the point where halal food has been identified as a threat to France's unity. Alors moi, ça m'a toujours choqué d'entrer dans un hypermarché et de voir qu'il y avait en arrivant un rayon de telle cuisine communautaire et de telle autre à côté. Islam is not in crisis, rather many Muslim-majority nations are enduring crises. Many of these are a side product of hundreds of years of Western colonization and exploitation. Some as a result of recent wars, assassinations and coups by France and its allies, and others through mismanagement and by leaders propped up by Paris and its allies. The question of liberation from foreign influences is ridiculous at best, and assumes that Islam was made in a Danone factory and that it will now become French again. Mr. Macron does not seem to mind foreign influence when it comes in the form of billions of dollars in Gulf money to buy weapons to use in Yemen or Libya, or when Muslims bought the PSG football club, turning it into a global powerhouse. But when it comes to Islam, Mr. Macron believes that it should be done the French way. In reality, this chauvinistic, misguided and hateful rhetoric is multi-layered. First off, Macron wants to revitalize his parties and his own political position ahead of the 2022 presidential elections by pandering to the far right. Moreover, his war on Islam, tough crackdown on crime and immigration, and incessant defense of French secularism is a perfect distraction to deflect from the reality of a troubled economy, mismanaged COVID-19 crisis, and Black Lives Matter protests calling for an end to police brutality, not to mention rising unemployment, inequality, and the Yellow Vest movement. If anything, Macron should try and liberate his nation's Muslims from the rising and systematic discrimination they face in the so-called land of freedom, equality, and brotherhood. A 54% rise in anti-Muslim hate crimes in 2019 alone has been compounded by a consistent crackdown by the French state on its Muslim community. A ban on the hijab, a ban on burkinis, closing mosques, expelling imams, raiding Muslim organizations and individuals. But France's issue with Islam is not only limited to Macron. The country that gave us the word etiquette never really had any when it comes to Islam. And Macron isn't the first leader to try and liberate Islam.